Hello and welcome. Delighted to have each and every one of you here with us today for a quick conversation on hiring a coach. So we've got a fast 30 minutes to explore this topic. Several of you did submit questions ahead of time, so we want to make sure we're answering those. And of course, want to invite additional questions throughout the conversation. Uh, unfortunately, the way for you to enter them is by typing them in, uh, because everyone is in the mute mode since we have so many. Okay, so please do type your questions. I'll monitor that panel as we go. What are we going to talk about in terms of hiring a coach? Well, the agenda for the conversation is first, know what you want. If you're going to have a coach, what do you want out of that? Learn about the coach and we'll talk about uh, exploring that and then we'll get specific with questions to ask a coach and then of course offer resources for you. So moving into the conversation, knowing what you want. I think about it, you're thinking, okay, I want a coach. Uh, who's the right coach for me? And it's almost as if you've got a whole bunch of doors to choose from and you're figuring out which door you want to go through. So what are the things to consider? First off, think about the type of coaching you want. Coaches are available with different areas of focus. Uh, so when we talk about type of coaching, uh, Professional coaching is your catch-all generic. At the same time, usually what you're talking about is in terms of the work that you do. Uh, sometimes it's very specific to career for finding a job, advancing your career path, changing careers, etc. Alternatively, it may be personal areas. Things such as your own balance in life, uh, considering the, uh, gee, what do I want to do as I transition into retirement? Uh, sometimes people specialize in ADH coaching. Uh, so you've got lots of options on the personal level. A very common one there is building the confidence. Perhaps you're looking for a business coach. If you own a small to mid-sized business and you want to work with somebody on sustainability for your business, scalability, uh, the growth, the marketing, the management, etc. Health coaching is another big area people find coaches in. And of course, another example of how important it is that coaches specialize because of all of the information around that type of coaching. And then, of course, it may be your interest in team coaching for a workplace. You've got a group that is working on a project together, and coaching is going to support them in being effective moving forward. So when you think about hiring a coach for yourself, start with, OK, what type of coach is going to be important to me? Think also about what you want from the actual coaching relationship. What's your purpose, your interest in having a coach? So if you're going to hire a coach, it may be because you want to develop specific skills for yourself. Perhaps you're going through transition and you want to work with a coach for that reason. It may be you want a coach because you want a sounding board. This is very, very common uh, areas, these three. Uh, developing skills, uh, transition are probably the most common. And then next comes the sounding board. A coach may be because you really want to get the clarity, the focus, in terms of what you're doing and where you're going, and then fully engage with ongoing motivation. Now, occasionally, the purpose for the coaching is a derailing behavior. It may be that an individual is looking for a coach because they are aware of this themselves. It may be the company brings in a coach to address that specifically. So what is the purpose for the actual coaching? Now, once you're aware of the type of coaching you want and the purpose for your coaching, another consideration is the process. And when you talk about process, the very first consideration to think about, whole person versus specific purpose. 
let's talk about what those are, what that means, and what the difference is. Whole person coaching means the coach is working with you holistically. You have different areas of your life that are influencing factors, at sometimes to the pro and sometimes to the con. Whole person coaching means that, okay, yeah, I'm here to work on my job or my career or my business, and there's also that awareness that when you open up the door and have the conversation about what you want in your personal relationships, what you want financially, what you want for your uh, exercise and fitness areas, what you want in your lifestyle, all of those factors play into what's happening for you, what decisions you're making, and what you're doing. Specific purpose coaching, alternatively, is only about whatever the purpose is. So if you decide, well, I am here because I want to develop the skill of leadership, then the only thing you do is talk about leadership, and that's it. <laughs> now, some coaches offer whole person. Some offer specific focus only. A consideration for you when you're thinking about who you want as a coach. Consider a balance of these two approaches. So for example, with a coach having an opening coaching session where you do explore what you want in all different areas, that way you have your own big picture and awareness of what's important to you. It also helps you with the clarity in terms of your values, your competing priorities, and your influencing factors. And then moving forward, you shift into, OK, this is all about the business or the job or whatever it is. So it's a balance of the whole person and the specific focus because bottom line, the door is open. Now, of course, some of you work in a corporate setting. And the big question in the corporate setting is, ooh, is it OK to delve into that whole person side? That gets personal. And here's what we found works great in the corporate setting. The coach and the client have a conversation. They talk about what it means to use whole person. They talk about what it means to use specific focus. And the client has the choice. They get to decide. What that does in the corporate setting is give that permission in terms of the personal areas, and it completely alleviates that concern uh, on the part of, OK, is it OK to go there? Now, fascinating statistic to back that up, Harvard Business Review looked at coaching. And when coaching is about the job or the workplace or that kind of thing, 76% of the time, personal issues get addressed. 76% of the time, I'm actually surprised it's that low, <laughs> is the bottom line, we are whole people. So as an individual hiring a coach, what are the pros and cons of the two different focuses? What's going to work for you? Specific focus is great when you have only a, a few sessions, a very limited amount of time. Whole person is great when you really want that big picture understanding. And for most, that balance of the two works really well. Next, you want to think about whether the coach has an agenda or is free flowing in terms of their process. So as an example, when a coach specializes in a particular area, an agenda can be very much developing that area, those topics. Uh, for example, if you're going to a coach because you want career coaching, it may be that the coach has defined steps they take you through. OK, first we're going to look at your confidence. Next we're going to look at your resume. Next we're going to look at cover letters, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes that's incredibly helpful because they have that step-by-step -step process and focus. And sometimes it put you into a, a round peg into a square hole, <laughs> so to speak. So you want to explore what that process is and what the flexibility is, because ultimately the coaching process is ideally tailored to the individual client based on who that person is. Now another factor for people in terms of choosing a coach, uh, first off, internal versus external. Sometimes in an organization, there are coaches available to people, and that's the requirement, that it be an internal coach. 
Alternatively, when you hit a certain level in the organization, they open up the, the possibility of external coaches being brought in for you. Now, if you're an individual, the way to look at this is, okay, are you focused primarily on price point, or are you focused primarily on coach experience and expertise? And obviously, there are pros and cons to each. Price point just makes sense, whatever the budget is, how much flexibility it is there, and you are the best expert on that. In terms of experience and expertise of the coach, we're going to dig into that uh, when we're talking about what you want to find out about the coach. So let's go there and explore it. First off, I do want to bring out the point of rapport. Whether it's money, internal coach, external coach, price point experience or expertise, the bottom line is the number one indicator of success in your coaching relationship is rapport, the connection between the coach and the client. We'll talk about that again. All right, learning about the coach. What do you want to know about that? Now, a sidebar comment, I believe some of the people on the call are coaches. So an interesting thing that happens, somebody goes to a website for a coach. Do you want the information about the coach on the front page? Or do you want the information about what the coach does and how it uh, supports you, what it does for you, what's available to you, and then access to the information on the coach? So a sidebar consideration, learning about what it is for you and then learning about the coach. So what do you want to know? First off, does the coach have training? And it's interesting, it used to be we didn't even know to ask this question. And increasingly, we know to ask this question because not all coaches are trained. So it's very, very important to ask them, what is your training in coaching? So when somebody says, oh, I have a degree in this, that, or the other thing, and it's different than coaching, anything other than coaching, it's a different kind of training. So what you want to ask about is coach-specific training. And in connection with that, it's very helpful to find out whether or not they're a member of the International Coach Federation. And for a couple of reasons. First off, if they are a member of the International Coach Federation, that tells you they have at least 60 hours of coach-specific training. It tells you that they are actually held accountable to the coaching code of ethics. So asking a coach, what is your training? What is your membership status? And do you have that code of ethics? Now, of course, if they are an ICF member, it is there. And it's great for you to know it's there. Take the time to review the code of ethics. It's incredibly valuable information for you. So do check that out. Read through it. Know what it is. Have that conversation. Then, delving further into getting to know your coach, asking the coach about their approach. So we talked about the process. Have the coach explain it, what they do, what their process is. So you thought about what you want, now hear what they're going to say. And it can be valuable to interview more than one coach because Different coaches have different processes and explanations, and it actually helps you because you're educating yourself in terms of what the options are and the possibilities. So that's helpful. Ask the coach to describe their process. Then ask them about their skills. Now, of course, it's pretty tough to simply say, hey, what are your skills? So alternatively, it's as you delve into the coach training, et cetera, Ask him about coaching competencies. So very specifically, the International Coach Federation has identified 11 core competencies for coaches. You can ask about specific ones where you say, oh, this one's really important to me. And you can ask the coach, share with me your expertise in terms of the coaching competencies. And then ask the coach about their background. And their background includes their work history, their experience, et cetera. Now, an interesting consideration comes up here. Sometimes when people look for a coach, they want that coach to be a subject matter expert. 
So whatever it is they're working on, they're saying, okay, I want this person to be the expert on this topic because that's going to help me. And in reality, there's a pro and a con to that. So the pro side of it is the coach understands that area and they know questions to ask, things to push you to consider. And on the con side, sometimes the coach's expertise gets in the way because it's easy for both the coach and the client to rely on the coach's expertise when you are, in fact, best served as a client when you figure out your own answer. Because when somebody else tells you the answer, the follow through and the engagement go down. The reason coaching has such an incredible benefit to people is because it is about you finding your own answer. So when a coach has a lot of subject matter expertise, really listen in terms of how they're working with the process. You want the expertise to be a benefit instead of a barrier. And it's all in how it's managed. OK, what else counts in this coaching relationship? It's the fit. So I mentioned earlier the rapport between the coach and the client. Well, how will you know if you're going to have rapport? Very often, you start out with a simple five-minute conversation. And you're going, well, that's a, that's a good indication, and I want more. <laughs> you want to figure out opportunity. What's great to know is that most coaches will offer a free introductory session. It's a mini coaching of about 20 to 30 minutes. In that way, you get a sense of the coach's process. You get a sense of how they do work and function. And you get a sense of the connection that you will have with that coach. On the coach's part, what's beneficial to them is a chance to get to know you as a client. And in addition to that, the coach is going, OK, am I the best coach for this person? Because if they're not, they want to refer you to somebody else who is a good coach for that process. So helpful to explore that through that introductory session. Another consideration is scheduling. I've seen people say, OK, I've got a great coach. This is perfect. And then the schedules <laughs> conflict so much, they have a hard time getting anything happening. So yeah, you want to pick a coach based on developing the rapport and that connection. And you also want to be aware of, are we going to be able to schedule the time together when we want that time? What is the flexibility in that regard? Then, of course, the appropriate expertise. So that comes up, of course, in several areas. We're already talking about the coach training that they have. We're talking about their background and their experience. Most specifically, it's their ability to truly empower you to explore, consider different possibilities, develop your strategy, and then refine your action plan. So knowing that they really have developed the skill set to most effectively serve you. And again, that introductory session, great way to find that out. Excellent opportunity. OK. Now, move into asking the coach questions. So what happens? Typically, you start out by deciding what you want in a coach. Then you're looking at various websites, or you're reading bios from different coaches. Uh, perhaps you've had people refer to you, et cetera, and you get to go look at their website and their bio. Uh, it may be you're finding them online, et cetera. And now you're ready to actually interview some of these different coaches that are available to you. Now, a very important point to bring up here. Some of you say, well, I'm looking at an internal coach. We have an internal coaching program. Here's what best practices tell us. Even with an internal coaching program, you do, in fact, want to have the opportunity to choose the coach as much as possible. Now, in some companies, it's pretty well limited to one coach. <laughs> so there's, there's a problem there. At the same time, at least have the conversation with them and make sure it's a comfortable fit before you move forward. 
if you have a few people, there's an internal coaching program. The idea is that you talk to several of the internal coaches and are involved in choosing your own coach. The reason for that goes back to the number one indicator of success in the coaching relationship, and that is the rapport between the coach and the client. Okay, so now let's dive into that actual interview with the coach. What do you want to ask them? Well, a common question is, what is your related expertise? And here's what happens with that question. It's actually wide open. And the coach can share their training or they can share their background, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you want to boil into what you want to know with that question, you want to know what is your training for coaching, what is your code of ethics, and what is your coaching experience. So these are follow-up questions that you have ready to ask when you're interviewing that coach. So if they go there naturally, great. That's wonderful. And perhaps they skip that part and they dive straight into background, citing uh, work experience, education, etc. So ask the open question first, and then as you go through the conversation, you've got follow-up questions about training, ethics, and then experience coaching. Now, more questions. Ask them, what is your coaching philosophy? And this is where you have a chance to understand them and how they approach their coaching. So for example, are they a believer in the whole person approach or do they stick strictly to the specific purpose? Or are they balancing those two? And consider also, there are coaches that really get that piece of empowering you as the individual. Now, of course, sometimes there's some balancing going on. Sometimes a coach really does have some great expertise, and you truly don't know. So if that occurs, how does the coach approach it? For example, do they say, you know what, I'm going to ask you permission to take off my coaching hat, and I'll put on a mentor hat or a consultant hat or a training hat, and I'll share some information on this with you, and then... Uh, what I'll do is put my coaching hat back on and, and ask you where you want to go with it. So having an understanding of how they approach it. Is there an opportunity for different roles to come in? How often? How is it managed? How is it identified? And as you explore their philosophy in coaching, another follow-up question that is very useful is to say, given what I want, what is your approach? So in other words, whatever their process is, however they're planning on handling it, when you share what you're looking for in that coaching relationship, what do they do with how they approach the coaching relationship? And that's going to give you fabulous insight in terms of their flexibility, how they're adjusting to you and what's going to work for you. Another great question to ask them, what are your strengths? as a coach. And this gives you a chance to understand what they're really great at and to know, hey, is that what's really important to me? Is that what's going to count for me? So ask the coach about their strengths. Then as you delve into the conversation further and get to know them, another great question to ask a coach, share a success story. Now, of course, there's a caveat to this question. When a coach shares success stories, they do have limitations because of the code of ethics. The bottom line is they've got to protect their clients and protect confidentiality, which means that that success story has to be shared in a way that's generic enough to give that protection, that confidentiality to the client so that it's impossible <laughs> for you to identify who the client is unless they have specifically secured permission from that client to share that story. So big point of awareness there. Sometimes you're interviewing a coach and you're asking about these things and you, it's important to know, okay, are they really protecting their other clients? When you hear those stories, is that a story you want your coach sharing about you? And if it's okay, do they have permission for doing that? 
Now, in terms of references, the same thing comes up. If you say to a coach, give me references, well, first thing is, before they are allowed to give you any single reference, they must specifically secure permission from that individual client to give them as a reference. Now, of course, this creates a dilemma. Because if a coach has their clients that they work with, and every time they're talking to a new prospective client, that person is saying, you know, give me some references, they've got to go back to their client and say, can I use you as a reference with this person? Can I use you as a reference with this person? <laughs> Each and every time. And then, of course, the coach starts thinking, okay, how many times are they going to ask the client? Put yourself in their shoes. If you were the client, and your coach asked you, okay, can I share your information with, and they continue to come back and ask and ask and ask, it gets old. It definitely presents a challenge. And of course, that code of ethics is there in terms of the confidentiality. So what are some ways you can handle that? Yes, you can ask for someone to contact. Be aware that there's only so much they want to do. So if you are going to ask for a reference to check, do that when you're really serious about that particular coach. Because if you call and you're talking to three or four different coaches to choose, and you're asking each of them for references, well, for them, it's limiting how many times they can give out that information to somebody else, because they're only going to be willing to ask a client a certain number of times. So do keep that in mind. Alternatively, if you go to their website, You'll often see testimonials in website, on websites. If you go to their LinkedIn profile, clients write recommendations there. So it's really easy to go look them up online and find those references. And that way, you're protecting the confidentiality of the client, too. Because if it's there, the client put it out there publicly, gave that permission, and instead of them being called for every single one and getting permission, they're available and you can find it. Another thought that many people have, if someone's going to give you a reference, they already know it's going to be a good reference. So of course it makes sense <laughs> that when you call a, a client they're working with, it'll be a good reference. So the question is, where do you want to go? for that reference information. OK, so you've got what to think about for yourself in terms of what you want in a coach, what you want in the process. You've got considerations in terms of what to know about the coach. And then you've got some great example questions. Now let's move into the resources. We've got a few minutes left, so we want to cover this information very quickly. First off, the International Coach Federation. This is where you have coaches that do have that minimum 60 hours of coach training, and they are accountable to that code of ethics. The Center for Coaching Certification is a resource. This is one of the training programs available to coaches. And you can find coaches who are graduates of this program. And then the Center for Coaching Solutions, where you want to have an agreement for a number of coaches. This is an organization, a firm, that provides coaches uh, based on what it is you're looking for. So the Coach Federation is a nonprofit professional membership organization. Uh, the pro side is you know that people are members by looking there. Uh, in terms of finding a coach there, your challenges, there are literally thousands. Uh, so it can be more challenging to narrow that down. Now, the Center for Coaching Certification, uh, in addition to being available, uh, simply getting calls, because people looking for a coach call and say, hey, you're a school. Do you have coaches available? And of course, we're going to help you with that. And we have an online searchable directory available to you for that purpose. Then there's the Center for Coaching Solutions. This is when it's for an organization of a business-to-business -business service, if you will. Uh, most often, you're looking for multiple coaches. So this is a resource for you as well. Now, in addition to that, as far as gaining information, we do have a blog available. And we do blog on the topic of hiring coaches. Uh, we also publish books. And what's great about those books is they can be a 
excellent resource to find a coach because each and every one of these books, the different chapters are written by different coaches. And it gives you a chance to check out that coach's knowledge base and have a sense of who they are. And so it's a great way to check out a potential coach. Of course, we do offer these free webinars. Very happy to make these available to you. Uh, if you ever want a quick check-in with us, just call or email. We're happy to help answer those questions, be of service, etc. If you are interested in outsourcing, whether you want consulting for a coaching program, training for internal coaches, or to be a coach, or you want a coach for yourself or for a number of people, definitely available to you on the outsourcing side. Now, you've invested time with me. I want to invest time with you available to you for a free consultation. So what will happen is I will send out a link to the recording of this conversation so that way you can come back and hear the whole thing right from the beginning. And when I send you that email, I'll invite you to let me know if you do want that free consultation. And if you do, I'll email you a link to my calendar. You'll be able to click on that link and go straight into my calendar and pick a time that works for you. Enter your name, your phone number, click all the way through until you receive a confirmation, and you'll be set for that time based on what works for you. Of course, another step for you is choosing the resources you're going to take advantage of, and that in turn supports you achieving the results. So thank you, each and every one of you, for being here for the time you invested uh, with us and with this conversation. Definitely looking forward to be of service with you. Now, given that we have used our time, uh, I do want to say thank you. And those of you that have other things scheduled, absolutely feel free to jump. Uh, definitely appreciate that. Uh, those of you that have additional questions, I'm going to hang around here uh, as long as you're here and answer those additional questions. I want to go back to uh, some of the information that you requested ahead of time. And of course, I'm monitoring that question panel. So thank you all. Uh, looking forward to talking with you and being of service. And for those of you that are hanging around, oh, and thank you for the comments in the question panel. So glad it was useful for you and gave you some good insight. Uh, let's see, in terms of questions, uh, if you have an interest in, uh, I've got a question here from one of you on career transition uh, for long-term employees. So yes, uh, we can provide individual coaches, we can do it as the firm, or we can give you access to that directory of coaches so that you have those choices. Uh, definitely available to you and certainly want to offer that 30-minute consultation so that there's a better understanding of exactly what you're looking for and then exploring how we can most be helpful to you. So thank you for asking that. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, in let's see, and I think we covered uh, about choosing the right coach and things to consider and look at. Uh, I think we also covered the question that was submitted on what qualifications to look for in a coach. Uh, so I just want to throw out if you have additional add-on questions to those, please let me know. Uh, another question is, hey, what's the reason you hire a coach? Here's what's exciting. The return on investment when you have a coach averages between five and 700%. It's absolutely amazing. So a coach is uniquely trained to truly empower you as far as achieving results. Uh, definitely want to offer, again, that free 30 minutes. Uh, okay, another question that came in. Oh, this is uh, by the, this is a great question. Thanks for asking this one. How do you manage conflict with favoritism in choosing uh, one coach over another when giving the option to the coaching? Well, here's the bottom line. Uh, on the front end, before coaches start interviewing prospective coaches, give them some of the information we covered here. What to consider when they choose a coach. Another thing to do is manage, OK, for this internal coach, how many clients can they take on? What is their availability? And it may be based on the individuals that are going to choose a coach. You give them three options. 
uh, and you decide who those three options are based on what's going to work well. That way you can control how often that coach is even available uh, because you manage how many clients and you manage whether or not they are included on the list of available coaches. So that's another great way to handle it. Now, do keep in mind that, of course, that relationship is so incredibly important. And so you want to take into consideration, OK, if people are asking for this coach, what's the reason they're asking for this one in particular? What is it that this coach does that's really working for people? And ask them, because what that does is give you the opportunity to work with other coaches and equip them so that they, too, are providing what it is people really want. So hopefully that gave you several good ideas. Thank you. Uh, again, that was a great question. So thank you for that. Uh, I believe from what I'm seeing here, we've covered all of your questions. Again, thank you for the comments. So very appreciative of this. All right. Thank you, all of you, and thank you for your comments again. Let me know what else we can do to be helpful. And enjoy your weekend, everyone. Thank you.